Hey, want to impress your pals by knowing all about the Impressionists? I love Impressionists. Really? You do? Yeah, I love it when people do impressions of famous people. I'll be back. Get out the chopper. I'm talking about a different type of Impressionist. Oh. I'm talking about a group of Europeans who changed the art world. <sighs> they defied the critics. Oh, yeah? They broke the rules. Cool. And stuck it to the man. You mean punks? Well, close enough. Can you believe Impressionist art was once loathed by so many? But those paintings seem so... normal. Back in the 1860s, they were far from normal. In fact, Impressionism was a new style that was the first movement of modern art. Impressionism originated in France, but its impact was felt throughout the West. Sounds important. Oh, it was. Here's why. After centuries of political upheaval and instability in France, the mid-19th century brought some positive changes. Under Napoleon's rule, a new, fresh-faced Paris emerged. Though it was still a turbulent time in France, many buildings in Paris were renovated. Dozens of parks were built, and trees started to line the streets. Sounds like one of those reality TV shows about house renovations my mum watches. Yes, but on a bigger scale and with fewer annoying contestants. The Salon, the exhibition that was held at the palace in the Louvre, became the most renowned art event in the Western world. In order for an artist to submit work to exhibit there, the art had to be assessed by a jury of experts. The jury decided if the work was good enough to be displayed. It stinks! Blah! One group of artists had all their work rejected by the Salon and they weren't happy about it. You talking about those Impressionist dudes? You guessed it. The group included Claude Monet, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, Alfred Sisley, Paul Cézanne, Edgar Degas, and Bert Morisot. Cézanne was like, for five years I've submitted work to the Salon and they've rejected it. I don't understand it. I posted woman dressing on Facebook and it got thousands of likes. And Monet was like, Stuff those snooty judges, we'll show him, we'll exhibit our own artwork, and we'll form a gang called The Super Friends! We are the Super Friends, we are the Super Friends! <clears throat> Actually, the group called themselves the Anonymous Society of Painters, Sculptors, and Printmakers. No, I prefer my name. They were rebels, mavericks. It was unheard of to create an art show that wasn't organized by the official French Academy's annual salon. Their first exhibition redefined art marketing. Sounds like they kicked some snobby art critic butt. They did. So you're probably wondering what made their work so special. No, I wasn't, but I bet you're gonna tell me anyway. The paintings of the Romantics and other styles of the time often depicted scenes from great literature, the Bible, or historical events. These artists were concerned with painting realistic scenes. So these Impressionist dudes laughed in the face of convention? Well put. They were controversial because they rebelled against these ideals. They painted scenes of everyday people and things in a figurative style. That doesn't sound too controversial. Well, it was. Artists like Gustave Courbet paved the way for Impressionism. Courbet refused to obey tradition and painted peasants and regular Joes on a grand scale which was usually reserved for royal, historical, or religious subjects. Japanese wooden block art also had an influence on Impressionism. By the 1860s, several well-known European artists, including Degas and Vincent van Gogh, had developed a fascination for Japanese art and culture. Like this. No, oh, not like that. Photography was another important influence. The Impressionists wanted to capture real-life movement. Impressionism continued into the 1880s and spawned other post-impressionistic movements like pointillism, fauvism, and futurism. None of those words mean anything to me. Google them. 